Good morning. We've been learning about our identity in God, who God made us to be, who he created and formed and designed us to be. We've learned that he has a specific purpose for our life. We've learned that we weren't a mistake, that we weren't an accident, that he created us on purpose. We've learned that he loves us. We've learned that he took care to create Adam and Eve personally and that he wants a personal relationship with us too. And today, I want to talk about what God has given us to form our identity. And they are the four P's. The four P's are a place, a purpose, partners, and parameters. So we know that we were designed on purpose for a purpose. We were designed specifically by God to do something. And we want to figure out what that something is. So we've talked about how you can't know what you're supposed to do until you know who you're supposed to be. And you can't know who you're supposed to be until you know who your creator is. So we've talked a lot last year and a little bit this year about who God is as our creator. And then we've talked a little bit this year about who we are, who he created us to be. So we each have a job to do. And our identity is formed by the place that God put us in and the purpose that he created us for. Even before sin and even before the fall, even before Adam and Eve decided to go against God's law, to disobey what he said, to break that relationship with him, to walk in disobedience, even before all of that, God gave them the charge to do meaningful work. The creation mandate came before the fall. Before any of that happened, before sin entered the world, God still gave Adam and Eve meaningful things to do. The creation mandate, like you've probably heard before, is Genesis 1.28. God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. So this was work that Adam and Eve were supposed to do. They were supposed to take care of the earth and take care of the animals on it. They were supposed to fill the earth. And God gave that work to them as meaningful work for them to do. They were working for him even before sin came into the picture. So work is an important thing that God gives us to do. And God gives each of us meaningful work to do. But he doesn't just give us work to do and say, okay, go ahead, your turn. He wants to be a part of the work that we do. He wants to be involved in our lives. He doesn't force us to work for him like we're his slaves. We're invited to work with him within the parameters he sets for us. There's another one of the four P's, parameters. Parameters are limits or boundaries. So God gives us boundaries, right? God gives us um, laws and commands because he loves us that says these things are good and these things you can do and these things you should do. And then he gives us lists of things that say these things aren't good for you. These things are going to harm you. And so these things you can't do. Those are our parameters, the things that we can do and the things that we can't do. And God gives us those parameters out of love for us. It's important to understand that because it's easy to see rules as um, God being strict or harsh or not loving us or not understanding. And that's not what it is at all. When God gives us rules and when he gives us guidelines, it's because he loves us. Any law that God has ever given, there has been a purpose for it. And it's been for the good of his people. So we aren't God's slaves. We're invited to work with him within the parameters he gives us. And 
he doesn't need us to serve him. He wants us to. He wants us to love him and to serve him, but he isn't helpless without us. It's not like God isn't going to be God if we don't serve him. It's not like God isn't still going to get his work done if we choose not to do it. If we choose not to serve him and not to live for him and not to love him, he'll find someone else to do it. But that's our loss, missing out on that chance to work with God, missing out on that chance to find out who we really are and find out who we're made to be, to find out that his plan is so much better than we could ever come up with for ourselves. He desires to work with us, to work around us, to work through us, to work within us. He desires to lead other people to himself through us and through the work that we're doing with him. He wants to use us. He wants to have that personal relationship with us. And the last one of the four P's is partners or people. God gives us people in our lives, partners in our lives, who are going to come alongside us, who are going to encourage us, who are going to help us to be who we're supposed to be, who are going to hold us accountable, who are going to teach us more about Him, who are going to say, hey, you're doing really great things for God. I want to help you. How can I help? We're going to have partners that God gives us, people who are close to us, people who help, people who care. So where do these four P's come from originally? If we look at the book of Genesis, if we look at the very beginning, God starts with these four P's, with Adam and Eve. God creates a place, the Garden of Eden, and it's this perfect place where Everything grows like it's supposed to, and there's no weeds or thorns in the ground, and it's beautiful, and there's nothing wrong in the Garden of Eden. It's just this beautiful place. And he creates Adam, and he puts Adam in the Garden of Eden. And then he gives Adam a purpose, the creation mandate. Adam has a place and a purpose the Garden of Eden and take care of it. Take care of the animals that are here. Take care of the land that's here. Take care of what I've given you. God gives Adam a partner, Eve. He looks all around at all of the animals and he has Adam name all of the animals and there's no one who can be a friend and a partner to Adam. And so God creates a partner for him. He takes one of Adam's ribs. He does the first surgery and takes one of Adam's ribs and he forms Eve. He gives Adam a partner. Eve was called his helpmate. She was supposed to help him in everything that, she, that he did to help him take care of the earth, to help him take care of the animals, to help him fill the earth and be fruitful and multiply. All of that. Eve was going to be Adam's best friend, his closest companion, his partner on the earth. And then God gave them parameters. You have everything. You have access to all of these trees and all of the fruit that are on them everything that's here you have access to every single thing except this one tree he gives them parameters he gives them guidelines he gives them borders he gives them rules that you can do all of this and this is what you have access to this is what is good this is what you should do but then this one thing you can't do and it was for their good. It was to keep them away from punishment. And I know some of you probably have the question, why did God even put the tree there? Why give them that option to go against him? And that's exactly the reason, to give them the option. Because God doesn't want people who serve him because they have to. If Adam and Eve didn't have that option, to eat from the tree that they weren't supposed to, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, 
then they would have to serve God. There was nothing else to do. And God doesn't want people who only love him because they have to. He wants people who choose to love him and serve him and follow him. He doesn't want to force us to do anything, and he won't. He won't force us to serve him. So I want you to think about your life, and I want you to think about the four Ps that are in your life that God has given you right now. And they'll change as you grow, as you change, as you get older, as you mature, as your life changes. These four Ps will change, but that doesn't mean the ones that you have now aren't important. They are very important now. I need everyone to get out a piece of paper. It can be a whole piece or it can be half a piece you can share with a friend. Now, on the front of that piece of paper, I want you to write about the four P's that are in your life. Take some time to think about what they are. The place. Where are you? At school? At church? At home? In Haiti? Which of those things are most important to you? You can write down all of them. You can write down a few of them. You can write down other places that you go that I didn't list. But what are the places in your life that are important to you and important to the work that God has for you to do. And then the purpose. What is it that you're good at doing, that you're capable of doing, that you can do for God's glory, that you can do to lead other people to Him, or to praise and worship Him, or to give Him glory Do you sing? Do you dance? Do you draw? Do you play sports? Do you play video games online with a bunch of friends through your headset? What is it that you do that you can use for God's glory? Or maybe it's something that you don't do much of, but you know you could. You could do this if you tried it. What's your purpose? So you're going to write about your place, and then your purpose, and then your partners. Who is it that's in your life who is willing to help you, who's willing to be there for you, who's willing to work for God's glory and for God's kingdom with you? Who are the partners that God has placed in your life? They could be friends. They could be teachers. They could be parents or siblings or aunts and uncles or cousins or grandparents. Who are the partners God has given you? And then think about the parameters. Think about the borders. Think about the guidelines. Think about the rules. And you don't have to write all of these down. But think about the guidelines that God has given you. Think about the things that he's been working on you about lately. Maybe he's been working with you or in you about a certain problem, about a certain sin that you need to start to take care of and start to change. Or maybe he's been working in you or with you about something that he wants you to start doing that you haven't started doing yet or whatever it might be think about the parameters that he's given you so the four p's place purpose partner and parameters go ahead and write about those
And now I want you to turn your paper over. And I want you to think about this week and think about everything that we've learned in Bible class this week. And you could even add in um, chapel from Wednesday. And I want you to write about what you've learned. Five things. List five things that you've learned in Bible class. It doesn't even have to be this week. It can be this year. What have you learned so far in Bible class this year?
All right, please turn your papers in to your homeroom teachers. Your homeroom teachers will be giving you a grade on those. And I hope everyone has a great day.